have a lesson about the models, uh, communication models. Okay, so we've talked about communication uh, and everything last week in the introduction. Now we will try to check the kinds or the types of communication models. Okay, so if you have questions, please raise your hand. And if you cannot hear me very well, <clears throat> please let me know. Okay, so if there's anything you'd like to say, just raise your hands. Okay. So first, let's check our learning objectives for today. So at the end of this lesson, you are expected to be able to identify the three standard communication models. So to be able to differentiate the various models of communication and to be able to distinguish the unique features of one communication process from the other, okay? So let's try to check the first one. So the very first kind of model, a communication model is the linear communication model. <clears throat> so from the word itself, we can imagine it's like a straight line, okay? So we have here the characteristics of the linear model. So first it's unidirectional. So the linear model is a unidirectional model. So it is a one-way communication. Hmm. It's okay, Kayla, you're not that late. Okay, so it's fine. Thank you for joining our class. Good morning. <clears throat> so uh, the speaker sends message to the receiver with or without effect. Okay, so the sender is just sending a message whether or not there will be feedback. Okay, so linear, one way. Mes uh, sender, message, and receiver. Okay, so sender can only transmit messages while receivers can only receive the messages and no feedback is expected to happen. Okay, so no need to, um, or there's no feedback expected here. So whether or not the speaker or I mean the receiver will send a feedback, it doesn't matter. Okay, so it's not even expected since this is just a one-way <clears throat> communication, a linear. So... Communication may not happen in turns, okay? So receiver may not send feedback to the messenger or to the sender. Thus, the lack of feedback is seen in this model. This applies to mass communication. If you can remember the types of communication, the last one, the mass communication. So uh, example, you're watching television. So many people from around the world is watching television or in the Philippines, the same channel, let's say G, uh, GMA. You're watching news in GMA. So the, the TV reporter sends message through television, that's the channel, and we receive it. We are the receiver. However, we are not expected to give feedback because it's just somehow uh, unnecessary to give feedback. Okay, we just received the message, we received the information, but our feedback is not um, necessary anymore. And it's hard to do so. How will you do it? Will you go there? Will you call their station? Okay, and it's just unnecessary. Okay, so it's an example of the unidirectional. Next is uh, number two, simple. This model presents a simple communication act. Very simple because it's just linear. If you look at the figure below, you will observe, uh, I haven't, okay, the figure will, you will see it later. So <clears throat> you will observe that it doesn't look like a process. Instead, it looks like a transmission of, hold on, a transmission of one-way casualty, casualty, which is conveying of only a cause and effect. So there is only the beginning and the end, uh, and there is no, uh, interchanging of roles between the sender and receiver. No interchanging of roles because receiver will not get, give feedback. <clears throat> so one way only. Okay, very simple. Simple kind of uh, model. And then persuasion, not mutual understanding. <clears throat> this model promotes one way. Hold on. 
So this model promotes one-way direction of communication, with, which promotes advice and influence rather than understanding from both receiver and sender. Again, the emphasis is on the lack of feedback. Okay, so sometimes this is used when you wanted to um, do some persuasion, when the sender of the message wanted to persuade someone or yeah, to, <clears throat> to inform and then at the same time persuade the receiver. So mutual understanding is not emphasized here because receiver <clears throat> uh, most of the time do not give feedback. So you don't know if there is a mutual understanding between the sender and the receiver. And again, because uh, it's because of the lack of feedback. Okay. <clears throat> so here is the illustration here. So number four, value psychological over social effects. So this model focuses more on the psychological effects, such as under understanding of the message rather than the social effects like building the relationship amongst the com communicators why so one direction uh, linear one way so sender gives message to the receiver that's it okay so that is just the receiver um, and understanding the message okay it doesn't build any relationship because receiver cannot share his or her feedback okay so there's no relationship being uh built here and there isn't any uh you're not sure if there is any mutual understanding between the two communicators so there is no assurance that the message was effective because the receiver is only concerned with the delivery of the message and will now know the effect the effect of the receivers because of the lack of feedback okay so yeah, there is no way for the uh, sender to know how the receiver understands, reacts, feel about the message being sent. Okay, so should be will not now will not will now know the effect. Will not know. Should be not know. Okay. So this is the illustration here, okay? So sender, message, and receiver, linear, straight, okay? So we have here examples of linear communication models. So first we have the Shannon Weaver, the Shannon Weaver model, also known as the information theory model was primarily developed to illustrate transmission of electronic information back in 1948, okay? So take a look at the illustration. So there you go, sender, the source of information and the encoder as well, okay? And then channel, this is the medium of communication and there might be some noise or barrier while sending the message through the, its channel. So for example, when you're sending it through um, virtually online, so there might be intermittent signal or um, loss of connection. So that is a noise, that's a barrier. And then the receiver or the decoder. So decoder, he will uh, decode a message. And then receiver, that's the person who will receive the message. If you can see, uh, there's feedback, but it's unnecessary if it's a linear communication model. Okay, so that was developed by Shannon Weaver. Okay, so this conceptual model has six elements. Okay, so first we have the information information source or that is the sender so the sender or information source chooses the messages to be communicated to the receiver and the channel to use and sends the message okay so you will choose whom do you want to talk to and then you will use uh you will choose a channel a medium uh in what way you'd like to talk to that someone 
would you like to send a message or would you like to uh, talk to him in person or her in person or video chat? <clears throat> Depends, right? And then transmitter encoder, this changes the message into a signal, then sends it over the, com the communication, it over the communication channel. Okay, so this is the uh, passing of message <clears throat> by the sender. And then the channel, this is the medium the sender uses to transmit the message or messages. Okay, as what I've mentioned earlier, um, channel could be computer, it could be face-to-face -face conversation, it could be a cell phone, telephone, okay? <clears throat> and then we have receptor or the decoder. This does the opposite of the encoder. It decodes the message sent over the channel. So this is done by the receiver, the, dec the decoding process or the interpretation process, receiving process, okay? And the receiver, that is the person, that is the destination of the message. The receiver is a person or a group of people who must get the message. They are the recipient. The receiver can then provide a feedback, which will then reverse their roles. But this doesn't necessarily happen when it comes to linear communication model, right? So uh, in case the receiver sends feedback, then he now becomes the sender will switch their roles. Receiver becomes sender, sends message through channel, and the sender becomes receiver because thus the sender will um, get the feedback from the receiver. So it's like there's a <clears throat> switch of roles. And then the noise, this is the barrier. So noise is a kind of disturbance coming from people, the environment, internal knowledge, beliefs, etc., which hinders the receiver from getting and understanding the message okay this might happen this could be uh literally noise background noise or poor internet connection or power outage or anything that blocks or hinder from the uh, hinders the receiver from getting the message clearly and understanding it clearly okay so those are the conceptual uh, like the six elements in that model next kind of model we have here Berlus smcr model so david Berlus conceptualized the sender message channel receiver or smcr that's sender message channel receiver model during the 60s so long time ago 1960s he postulated this model from the Shannon Weaver information theory model and emphasized on the encoding and decoding parts of the process. Like it's, it's like similar to Shannon. However, it emphasizes on the encoding, <clears throat> the making of the message and the decoding, the <clears throat> receiving part of the process. Okay, so if you can take a look at the illustration below, that's the Berlus SMCR model of communication. So we have the source, the source, the sender, it encodes the message and sends through a channel, then the receiver decodes the message. Okay, so source should have communication skills, attitude, knowledge, social system, culture, they have those different aspects. Message, it should have the content, what elements are there, treatment structure, coding use, like the language use, right? English or any other language. And then the channel, you could hear it, you could see it, you could touch it, you could smell it if possible, or you could taste it, okay? But most of the time you can usually hear or see or touch. You can touch a computer, you can touch a cell phone, you can see it, you can feel it, right? And then, Receiver, yeah, should also have communication skills, attitude, knowledge, social system, and culture, similar with the sender. Okay, so that's the Burles SMCR or sender message channel receiver model of communication. Okay. Next, Burles model has four components. As mentioned earlier, it's or they are uh, sender, message, channel, and receiver. 
he stated that each of the components are affected by many factors. Okay, so the sender, okay, uh, first is the communication skills. So the communication skills of sender and receiver plays a significant role in the process. Communication skills include writing, speaking, listening, presenting, reading, etc. If the sender is not good in communicating, the message might be lost in the process of transmittal. That's really true. If you if you are a sender of the message and you don't have a very good communication skill, tendency is that your message will be misunderstood or will, will not be clearly um, interpreted or decoded by the receiver. So it's not clear. So make sure your message is clear, is understandable, okay? So that the receiver will get the exact message that you want them to get, okay? So it's really, really important. So you should, uh, practice good communication skills. Okay, you should clarify things. Okay. Chapi ako, Sahara. Who else are, who else among you here? Not hearing me clearly. Okay. So try to, <clears throat> Okay, I understand it happens. That's an example of uh, noise in communication, right? Barriers in communication. Okay. It's, it's no problem. I, I understand. Thank you for letting me know. Okay. So next factor would be attitude. So the attitude of the sender and receiver also plays a part in the process. The sender's attitude towards others himself or herself, and the environment can affect the, me the meaning of the message, okay? What's the attitude? Are they friendly? Are they, um, what do you call that? Mm, what else? What other attitude may affect the message? Uh, how they, uh, their, maybe their, their current, emotion while sending the message if they are angry if they're so happy it will affect how they will um, send the message okay so it's your attitude and then knowledge knowledge of the sender and receiver on the subject matter makes the sender an effective communicator so if the sender is familiar with a subject or topic at hand it adds value and impact to the message that's true so if you are very familiar with what you're trying to say, you can say it or you can send it in a very comprehensive way because you know how to make it simple. You know how to make it more understandable for your receiver. But if you don't have any knowledge about that, you might even find it hard to um, look for the proper terms and words to use while sending the message, right? So it's really important that you know what you're talking about. You know what you are discussing maybe so that you will be able to send it in the most comprehensive way possible. Okay, so that your receiver can easily understand as well. And of course, if the receiver has knowledge about the message that you are trying that he or she received, then uh, the receiver will be able to send a relevant feedback as well pertaining the subject matter or the message. Okay, so it's important or knowledge uh, also impacts here on the communication process. And then social system, beliefs, religions, social status, values, and other social factors can affect how the sender communicates the message and how the receiver understands. The situation and place or environment where it happens are also part of the el this element, the social system. Do you have, do you share common beliefs, religion, or social status? If not, when the sender sends message and the receiver find it offensive because it's against their culture, their beliefs, or their tradition, then there might be misunderstanding. 
uh, during the communication process, right? So it also affects the communication process. So if they don't have common values or beliefs or even religion, okay? So there might be misunderstanding and even, um, they call that, even arguments, okay, between the two. And then culture. Cultural difference can make it difficult to communicate. Some culture may accept something while the other may find it offensive, as what I've mentioned. Culture may also be under social systems. Okay, culture is under social system. So some expressions, some way of communicating may be offensive to other cultures. So you should be culture sensitive. Okay, uh, if you are aware that you are talking to a person from a different culture, from a conservative culture, traditional one, or anything, you should be careful on the words, the expressions, the gestures that you're doing while having the communication because you might be offensive for that person. They may accept that differently, interpret that differently. Okay, so there will be no effective communication if that happens. So we fail to reach our goal in communication, which is to attain mutual understanding and effective communication. Okay, so you should be sensitive. You should be very cautious about it. And then the next, uh, uh, the next factor would be the message. So the message content, the content is the in entire uh, entirety of the message. It covers beginning until the end. So uh, the wholeness of the message, what it is all about, okay, from the beginning until the end. So what does it? Uh, what is it all about? What's the content? What's the focus? Okay. One moment. So that's the wholeness, that's the entirety. Next is elements. These are what comprise the message. This includes gesture, body language, language, haptics, like what we've learned uh, before last week, I think last week, content is accompanied by elements. So what are the elements present in the content? What are the gestures used while uh, telling the message, while the sender is telling the message? What body language? Okay. So those are the elements. They accompany the content of the message. And then treatment. Treatment is how the message is conveyed, how it is uh, passed, how it is transmitted. It is how you package your message, okay? The approach you did. Did you set it in an angry manner? Did you say it politely? Did you send the message politely or accordingly? So it's important how, how your message is being passed conveyed and transmitted. Next is structure. Structure refers to the arrangement of elements in the content of the message. Arrangement of elements affects the effectivity and impact of the message. So you should, you need to be very particular about the structure, okay? So don't send message or don't talk in a very, complicated manner, okay? Try to arrange which one you will say first, then the next one, just like when you're writing an essay, of course, you need to have introduction, the body and the conclusion. So try to apply that structure, structure as well when you are talking or when you're sending a message orally. Try to uh, have it organized, okay? And don't, Talk very fast, don't talk very slow, okay? Try to pause, don't sound, mon uh, don't be monotonous, 
when you're talking. Okay, try to arrange your thought first. And sometimes it's really hard, especially if it's an interview. Sometimes you will really uh, become very nervous and you try to, and you tend to get lost. You, know, you, you stutter sometimes, especially if you, you're doing public speaking. Okay, so you need to practice. You really need to organize your thoughts before you send a message. And then code. Code is the form in which the message will be sent. Message can be sent in the form of video, spoken words. So it's like a channel as well, medium, text, culture, etc. Improper use of a code may still lead to miscommunication. Okay. So you should learn how to identify the proper way of sending the message. Okay. So if it's like an apology, maybe you can say it in person, or if you find it awkward, maybe you can send it through an email, okay? So make sure how to send your message accordingly so that there will be no miscommunication. Okay, so proper coding of your message. <clears throat> Next factor will be your channel. So simply means the use of the five senses. How is it transmitted? Hearing. Hearing is when you use your ears to get the message. Seeing when your eyes are used, the sense of sight is activated. So when you're watching a video, okay. Touching, communication through touching is also possible. Like when you're comforting your friend, so you tap their back or you give them a hug. So that's communication. Smelling. Smell can also be used as a channel for communication. The smell of something burning can communicate the danger of fire nearby. So if you can smell like, oh, it smells like smoke. And then you find out that the neighborhood is burning or on fire. So that's how the message was transmitted. Okay, so if you smell like the rice is <laughs> over uh, burnt in the kitchen, so time for you to turn the uh, gas uh, or the stove off because your rice is, you know, burning as well in the kitchen. Okay, taste. Taste can also be a channel of communication. The tongue has millions of taste buds that can be used to decipher or to interpret, okay? But it's not very usual, okay? And the fourth factor would be the receiver. The receiver and the sender have the same elements, okay? Because they are both the same people, it's just that they have different functions during the communication. And they could interchange their roles while having the communication process, okay? So you can refer to the description uh, above, earlier about the receiver. So uh, we've, we've seen earlier that the receiver should have Communication skills, attitude, knowledge, social system, and culture, similar with the sender. They both share the same elements. Okay. So that's all about the linear communication models and the examples of linear communication models. So they, there are two examples given there, the Shannon Weaver and the Burles SMCR model of communication. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay, so the next uh, kind of communication will be the trans transactional communication models. So the transactional com uh, communication models are communication models that illustrate how the sender and receiver take turns in conveying and receiving messages. So this time they take turns. So it means there's feedback, right? Earlier with a linear one, no feedback necessary. Okay, just one way. This time, it's um, they are taking turns, okay? The receiver, uh, the sender and the receiver. So we call the sender and receiver communicators or interlocutors, 
Okay. So their roles are reversed each time sending and receiving messages occur at the same time. Okay. For this kind of communication model, we'll, we will scrutinize the helix model. Okay. That's an example of transactional. So there's an interaction. There's switching of roles because there's feedback. And sender receiver, they switch roles every time during the communication process. So first example will be the helix or dances helix model. So the helical model of communication was conceptualized in 1967 by Frank Dance. That's why it's called dances helix model. So the helix communication model illustrates how the development and growth of communication or communicative actions will always be based on previous experience or behavior. So that's the, uh, that's the concept in there. So the development and growth of communication, it is based on the previous experiences and behavior of the communicators, okay? So this model shows how the knowledge base of a person deepens and expands throughout life. So just like an example from a child, so when you were a child, uh, you don't have, or your communication skill will slowly develop. So first, the child will just cry and make noises until they learn how to talk, baby talk and all. And then when they grow old, they uh, acquire proper communication because parents teach them teachers in the school until they become adults and we can fully develop our communication skill. Okay, so it depends if you have a very good background or experiences. So you your parents let you study English at a very early age. So when you reach high school, you can speak English very, very fluent and very good. So that's your previous experience, right? So it will uh, affect your present um, communication skill. Okay, so that's the dances helix model is trying to emphasize here. Okay, uh, it's like a shape of a, a cone, right? Here, so from very few experience going to more and more experiences as you grow old. <clears throat> okay, oops. So next would be the interactive communication model. So this is the third kind. Interactive communication model, also known as convergence model, emphasizes the coding and decoding components of the process. So the, the coding and the decoding. It also focuses on the cycle of message exchanges between the sender and the receiver, and messages will always be affected by the field of experience. These are communication patterns rising from factors such as psychological, social, cultural, societal, and situational experiences or gained knowledge. So they said messages are affected by those field of experience. Okay. So what are your psychological situation or your psychological uh, being, your social background, your cultural background? Okay your societal background or experience, or what are the knowledge that you have, okay? So it will affect uh, by, that, by those um, fields of experience. And example of this one is the ARMS communication model. I, I tried to search the pronunciation for this one. Uh, if you will just read it, you can read it at as Schramms. However, it's like a German family name. And when I try to research on how it's pronounced, it says AMS. I'm not sure. It just sounded AMS for me. AMS communication model. I don't know. But anyway, this is how it is illustrated. Okay. So encoder, interpreter, or decoder. So in short, this is the sender. Okay. The encoder, the interpreter, and the decoder at the same time. He or she will send message and then the receiver, the, the decoder, the interpreter, and the encoder again because he or she will send feedback. Okay, so both sender and receiver have the same roles. 
and both of them are sending messages to each other. So it's a cycle. So it's interactive. So there is interaction, meaning there is feedback as well. So messages, <clears throat> encodes message, send it to the decoder or the receiver. The receiver interprets as well, and then encode again. So they change roles uh, during the communication process. It's a, it's a process, it's a cycle. So there are role switching from time to time during the communication process. Okay, so that is the AMS communication model. Okay, so AMS model has the following components. So first, sender or the transmitter. So the one sends the message, okay? Encoder uh, converts the message into codes before sending. So this is still the sender. Decoder gets the encoded message, then converts it into language understandable by the receiver. Okay. Interpreter, this is the, could be the sender or the receiver. So it depends which roles are they playing during the communication process. So tries to understand and analyze the message. Message is considered received after interpret. Interpretation is done and message is understood. So interpreter and receiver at the same time. Receiver gets the message, decoding and interpreting is also part of his or her role. Okay, so sender can be the encoder and the uh, interpreter and then the receiver, the decoder and the interpreter as well and switch. And then a message, data sent by the sender and information that the receiver gets. That's the message, okay? Feedback, process wherein receiver responds to the received message, okay? So the receiver gives feedback or reaction. Medium or media, this is the channel used to send a message. We've, we all know about this already. And then the noise, interference, disruption during the process. And this is also created when the intended meaning sent by the sender is different from uh, what was interpreted by the receiver. And then a field of experience, patterns which affect the communication process. Uh, this can be from society, culture, situation, psychological or sociological events or experiences of the sender and receiver so it they have a different field of experiences so it might affect their way of communicating to each other okay all right so those are the components of this model 